Okay, we are getting started with our first topic here, textual evidence, likely the biggest one you'll see on your SAT. Almost all four of these example question types you will see on test day. So what they're going to ask you is some variation of which choice is either going to best or worst support the conclusion, right? Which choice is better? Which choice might weaken that conclusion? Which finding might, might support a conclusion? Which quotation might support a conclusion? These words, conclusion, hypothesis, argument, claim, they all mean the same thing. They will be used interchangeably on test day. We've got a pretty simple three-step plan here. Okay, the first step is you got to identify their argument. This whole question is going to center on what the conclusion is, what the hypothesis is, what the claim is, right? If you can't identify that, you're not going to know how to answer the question. This is the most important step. What you're going to do then, you're going to read the answers, and you're going to read the supporting information. In other words, every part of the paragraph, every part of your passage, that's not the argument. Okay. Then you'll eliminate choices that either go against your argument or that don't make sense with the supporting info. You might have a choice that, sure, argues the same thing, but it uses completely different evidence to argue that thing, and that's going to be an incorrect choice. Let's take a look at this example question. In a research paper, a student argues that the so Soviet Union's victory in the Battle of Stalingrad, right, we're going to have a little bit of a non-essential phrase here, which is something we're going to get to in boundaries, was more symbolically important than it was strategically important. So this argument, if I can characterize that argument in just two words, all right, symbolically, right, symbolically, not strategically, right, three words there, symbolically, not strategically, okay? So. Which of these quotes is going to effectively illustrate this claim? Let's see. Let's take a look at this. Does this really think about symbolically? No. This is describing how the war was fought here. This is, this is describing the Battle of Stalingrad itself. So this is not the correct answer. Let's take a look at the next one. Most scholars debate which would have occurred, what would have occurred with the German forces attacked the, you know, more advantageous location. That's not related to this at all. This is not the answer, okay? After suffering humiliating losses west of Stalingrad, the Red Army's generals knew that Stalingrad would be the target of a major... Nope, I can already see here we're not talking about, you know, how important it was strategically, symbolically, whatnot. Now, a defeat at Stalingrad, which bore the name of revered Soviet leader, revered means that it's probably important, this is a symbol, right, would have yielded some important territory, but would not have significantly stunted the war effort, which means it was not strategically important. There's our claim here. Crucially, though, it would have crushed the Soviet spirit if this had not happened, right? Again, symbolically here. So we see our answer is D. And now we're going to move on. Okay, this is our, this is our last question here for textual evidence.